You will rub you or be exterminated! Exterminate! Exterminate! In Magpie's electronics, everything is not right, as a strange woman appears on the TV and starts sucking people's faces off. In particular, the Connolly family has their grandmother's face sucked off, something which the Doctor and Rose decide to help out with. Will the Doctor be able to save these people? Or will the wire eat all? Find out as so we review The Idiot's Lantern, written by Mark Gattis, directed by Yuri Rosslin, and was broadcast on the 27th of May, 2006. I am Nick. I didn't do it. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> I played the big cut. I am Nick. And I am Conrad. And we are the Eyes of Harmony, and I use this uncomfortably. Good. Then I'll begin. <laughs> My face! So, Idiot's Lantern. The yeah. one with the, the, that confusing name which you, you, you pretend that you know what it means, but you don't. <laughs> pretend to be small. Apparently it's a reference to the to a television. The television is an idiot's lantern because you're sitting all day watching it. Mm. And basically it's go out and do something. So there you go. Mm. Um, so, I mean, a historical one. It's, yeah. it's but, uh, it's, uh, I think one nice thing that the story does right is it does get the setting down quite nicely in general. Mm, like, definitely. It does feel like the 1950s. You know, the inside house set in particular, I think, was quite nicely like. Yeah. Had the right feeling to it, you know. Definitely, and I think they managed to actually do it quite well, because, I mean, it's not exactly the most interesting historical period. I know, like, the Doctor's like, oh, 1953, it's a great year. Uh, but, you know, it's... Yeah, it's not one you'd immediately... It's not like, oh, yeah, if I had a time machine, I'd go back to 1953. It's mm-hmm. just not one of those those times that you, you go to. So, I mean, it's quite... The nice thing about Series 2 is, again, it, they're, just, they're just having nice adventures, you know? It's... None of this story art crap. It's, yeah. It's, oh, you know, they wanted to go see the 50s, so they're in the 50s. You know, yeah, there's a, the finale, <sighs> unlike Series 1, the finale isn't really part of an ongoing story arc. It's just sort of disconnected. A very subtle Torchwood thing. And that's it, yeah, it. yeah, that's pretty much everything, yeah. That's it, that's it. So, like, you know, they've just come to see Elvis in New York, but... Uh, and they miss. <laughs> I, do, I do love it where it's like, it's a very London-looking New York. A very <laughs> London-looking part. Uh, like the or, or the the uh, union. The, uh, the, the, that slightly bores me because they just they just drove past several like Union Jacks up above. You yeah, like, thought would, they would have noticed a bit sooner. Maybe they're just so in love that they're not looking at each other, uh, anybody else. They just look at the back of each other's heads. Oh, well, honest. Rose is looking well, at the others. <laughs> well, to be fair, the Doctor is wearing sunglasses, so yeah, maybe true. It's, he could uh, just have mirrors in the side. Yeah, <laughs> it's not really paying attention to the road. It's just. <laughs> But yeah, so um, so it is. Uh, I quite liked. Um, so we kind of meet the family, actually, don't we? With uh, yeah, though it's weird because why then? Like they okay, they get to the end of the road. They, don't, they briefly say hi to the family as they drive past, and then they get ahead to this dead end, and then they come back and come back to the Connolly's house. Why? Yeah, that is odd, actually. How they and get like back that to happens there. at night time, despite the fact that the chase happened during the day. So. From what Rose said earlier, you presume that she went from house to house to house. Why wouldn't the particular was that the house which stuff actually happens in? Hmm, that is true. It seems so contrived. Like, everybody else in the street has been taken, I guess, at that point. So that it's the only one that can happen at that house because Grand yeah, but is if, still if, there. If, if the people are still buying TVs, surely there'd be like an extra one somewhere. True, probably. But then again, like Mister Connolly. Would they really say anyway? Mm. Oh, I gotta say, Jamie Foreman as Eddie Connolly does a great job as the the yeah, douchebag okay. dad. I say the acting was quite high. However, the one thing about the dad is that um, because you see him initially and he comes in and like the, um, Tommy asks whether or not he can get a TV, and initially he seems he's like you know, no, he's, and then the next like scene, like, the next time we see him, they've got a TV. Well, no, 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 he was like, well, maybe for the coronation, we'll, we'll see. 
Yeah, yeah, he's, but he's, yeah. He's, he seems initially kind of nice, and then they immediately like changed that tune. Yeah, but it was also like how quickly he kind of changed his mind because it was like, oh, maybe, but you know, he didn't look like he was going to get one. Then suddenly, oh, actually, no, it makes sense because they made a cause TV it's, No, because that scene is set before Magpie gets wired in a different sort of sense. Mm. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Face sucked without losing his face. Yeah. I did love that first scene actually, and one thing, um, the director by Euros Lin, in this one, it t- he took a very different approach to doing lots of kind of tilted angle shots. Mm. Like even when the doctor was walking down the street at one point, there was tilted angle. Yeah, very, very, quite a few of them. Um, um, and I know this is something I keep bringing up, but actually, the lighting in this episode is pretty good. I noticed there was quite some effective yeah. use of the shadows um, across, but especially in the opening, in particular. However, one thing about the directing. Partly directing, partly editing, um, which is actually an issue I also brought up in um, Time and Rani, was that sometimes in the camera shots, you can tell that, like, in some of the um, wider shots, they clearly had filmed further out and then zoomed in. However, the issue with that, whenever that happens, is that it makes everything look very pixelated. And this episode in particular, I noticed that happening several times where it just suddenly would shift from, like, looking just fine to suddenly pixelated. Yeah, slightly, yeah. Yeah, um, it, it, it's particularly notice. well, there's one scene, like, at the end where they're showing the entire street having a party, and it's, like, it's very pixelated when they're doing the far-out shot. And in particular, the shot where the Doctor's climbing up the tower, like, that, that looks blurry as all heck. Mm. And then there's that classic... Uh blooper where his leg flies out and it obviously went over the edge of a green screen because his foot disappears for a moment and then comes mm. back as it's hanging on. It's like a top-down so shot. Sloppy. And actually, I'd say the green screen when they are climbing the tower, I guess I skipped a little bit ahead, but like it's a little sloppy. It, you can it tell. Is, yeah. like it, it, it doesn't it's really It's good when they mesh. use the close-up. The close-ups look fine. Oh, yeah, because like, you can tell they, that they're, yeah. Yeah. the close-ups, you don't actually see anything, so you can tell you just shoot it outside and make it look yeah. like that. Even when like the doctor actually pointed out the tower in the distance you can see it's just been painted on yeah i mean they did a better job what was it in the the awakening where they added that oh yeah that, the painting that, the yeah they painted painting. in the, yeah. the castle yeah like that was impressive as hell and you know modern technology yeah put it to shame that did the awakening which that is did. an odd thing to say for it being such a air story yeah. <laughs> but anyway yeah so um uh mr magpie played by ron cook I've, I always, I always kind of pity him because, I mean, he's not doing it because he's actually evil. He just wants to kind of stop wants, going through hell, really. He wants to stop going through hell. He wants to make a good impression on the people around him. And I think to some degree, he like they mentioned briefly about how he would fought in the war. I think that affects him more than he lets on. So yeah. I think, I think considering putting all those things into account, plus the slightly more sympathetic edge to him earlier, you know, like with the TV... You know, like... <sighs> I'm talking about Magpie here. Magpie? Yeah. You went on to Connolly right Am there. Am I? Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> I, I misheard you. I misheard you. No, Ron Cook. Uh, Jamie Foreman plays sorry, Eddie. Sorry. Ron yeah. Cook and uh, Magpie. Um, okay, I always Magpie, pity sorry, him. Yeah. Magpie. Um, yeah, to some degree, though, with Magpie. With Magpie. My issue is just simply the fact that, um, you know, while the, getting your face sucked off isn't... No, of course it isn't a good thing, and like it'd be kind of terrifying. Like he's going doing the wires bidding, like completely, like not. You know, he, he realizes what will happen, and all these people he will kill, and yet he's not doing anything about it. Like, well, it's because it's that noise in his head. It's like a torture, but he can't kill himself, I guess, because there's too much of a coward to do that. You can tell it's a coward by. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's, he's just a coward. I mean, he's he's not a bad person. I mean, he could have locked Rose just in the shop, but he tried to get Rose to leave. He, he didn't want her to have her face taken. No. He's just like, get Despite out, Despite the fact that he's, he's doing the whole please, thing where he's going to get everybody else's face. Yeah, I know, but it's only, yeah, it's because he, he just wants peace himself. And I always, I always like, in the scenes, it's really it's really smart and quite, yeah, like, it, it gives you weird, right? But... Every time the wire's on screen, there's this really high pitched, like like you know like when a TV like was like yeah, you know when like it went off and it was, it was just a really high like, no high frequency noise and uh, they they play that all the way through the scenes and like I was listening on my laptop with like uh, earphones in because you get the best quality of sound there. Yeah. 
and like, oh god, it was like, it was like, if that was what Mr. Magpie was hearing all the time, you know, I would have felt pretty. Yeah, I, I can understand why he did time. it because, like, and if it was like ten times louder to him, we don't know. Yeah, but, uh, the issue I have with that is that they don't show maybe enough confliction within him. Yeah, I mean, you only see him doing the bad stuff, and then, then at the end, you suddenly decide. Oh, we, oh, we want to make him a bit more, you know, show him off in the side. I think they light. spent a little too much time on the Connollys as well. Yeah, well, yeah, just in general, they really did, like... And actually, that's one issue that I really have with this story, is that it takes forever to do anything. Like, yeah. nothing happens until almost yeah, the end the of the episode. Yeah, the Doctor's actually pretty slow on this one. Yeah, no, like, I, well, the issue I have, and just the fundamental issue with the episode, is that the audience knows what's happening from the very first moment yes, they know there's what's no happening. mystery there is no mystery oh, it's just yeah, waiting for really the doctors true. to figure everything out that it's, is true they shouldn't they it's... shouldn't have shown it should have just been the wire it should have just been like as no because even then we would have known it was tvs it should have just shown the lady on the tv go right then we'll begin and then just start laughing it shouldn't have done a face pull because we all then because then Possibly we not even, like actually i think the way that this episode could have been really effective is if they didn't Actually, show, show the wire at all. Yeah. Actually, the way they could, should have done it in a flashback is, later in the episode, maybe later in the episode. But um, the way they should have done it is that the doctor comes to a house, you know, perhaps for whatever reason, and then finds these faceless people without you name. Know, no, the whole backstory. They, they still could have done the bit with the cops taking it. That's how they first yeah, find yeah, out. Yeah. That that still would have been fine. But yeah, actually, that is a really good point. If they hadn't have shown the TV part, there would have been that really interesting. Like, oh, what is actually. What yeah. is doing this? What is taking these? Oh, but yeah. the issue is, is that they just don't. They, 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 they remove the mystery. They, mo- they remove any mystery, so the audience knows exactly what's happening and knows what's going to happen. When the doctor's running around not knowing anything, like it's frustrating as a viewer. You know, you already know. You yeah, already know. Actually, it yeah. beca- makes it, it uh, just doesn't. I do want to add that actually, the doctor is pretty pretty thick in this one. <laughs> then actually thinking about it. I mean, when they chase the police car and they do Operation Market Street or whatever, and they literally just wheel one car, it was so unimpressive. Like, one, yeah. it's like who would even like buy from like a shifting car at the end of this cruddy like road, you know? And the doctor's like, "Where have I gone? Oh, what? Van- oh, vanishing? I- this is this is. It's not know, a day here, or anything. This is Queen Elizabeth, England, not <laughs> Stalin's Russia. And it's like. Mate, seriously, you saw them turn down here. They're obviously going to be down this road. Yeah. Come on. Use yeah. your brain a little, Doctor. In fact, it was Rose who figures out the whole thing about the TV, TV. before the Doctor does. The domestic approach. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, Rose, Rose is the one who goes to Magpie. It was smart how they actually uh, split them up, though, when uh, they take Gran, and then uh, she sees the TV, and then Doctor has to go off without her. That was good. That was like a smart split up without it being forced it was pretty good she saw the electricity on the tv so that would have been fine if they'd shown the tv like that and continued it from yeah. there but it's just at the start where you know yeah that is and yeah for I, our, I, I, I actually 100 percent agree with with what you said like yeah they, they did remove any mystery um yeah and like i said it just makes the audience already well aware of it's everything. just frustrated yeah and then the doctor's just blooming slow what i do like though is um, the detective inspector bishop actually working with the doctor. Yeah, and no. initially, yeah. Like, I do like it. When, I like you know, him in his first scene. When they get to Magpie's electronic shops, he's kind of annoying. He's dumb, isn't he? Like, he's well acted to begin with. Like, he's like, kind Good of relatable. He's, like, he's like, someone you know, who doesn't yeah. know what the heck he's doing he's, because yeah. of, like, such a weird incident. We can empathise with him because we know that if we were in that situation, we'd be just as fucked as And in the was. shop, he just kind of loses his brain. A portable TV? <laughs> Colour TV! And actually, actually, I'll just say quickly, why the heck did it turn to colour? Why? Yeah, I, see, It just spontaneously see, decided is, to go is, to colour, and then black and white I again. generally don't think that could actually physically happen. No. I'm not sure if, if, a, if well, a black I, I and white could produce colour. I presume it's some sort color. of, oh, oh why is this alien? Oh. But I, I, why? Why? Why did they even bother to turn it to colour? I guess because it's got enough energy to do so. But Why? It's dumb, isn't it? But it only happened for five seconds. What was the point? I don't know. Oh, one thing I did love was actually when it did the shot from inside the TV looking out. Oh, yeah. That was those shots cool, were... Yeah. Mm, love those shots. They were great. That really... Yeah. that like That's a really unique shot for that, mm. that story. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. But yeah, I always remember actually watching this one on TV, um, especially the very beginning with the lightning strike. I don't know, it's just yeah. one which always kind of stuck with me, this red lightning. Actually, mm. probably it was one of the first, actually, because we recorded, we were recording them on VHS, and I think this might have been the first one on like VHS number three or something, which we recorded. So I remember mm. that it would have obviously been the first yeah. one I watched. Like, you know, like DVD files and you just play yeah. all, because I mean, on VHS... Yes, I'm that old. <laughs> On VHS, yeah, I do. VHS, but when you press play, you know there's no skipping ahead, so you just kind of watch it all. You don't care well, if it's no, good or bad ahead, story. Yeah, I know, but it's like much more difficult. You don't want to stretch the tape or anything by because you fast forward by you know seeing it on the screen, which sometimes would damage. Well, that's what I was told. Not sure if that's true or not. Well, but like, after long use, but you can do it sometimes. Yeah, I but I know. I just I, well, I love Doctor Who so much that I didn't want. To, I don't want to skip any going around. I'm just that mm. dedicated of a fan. Yeah, I, I, I remember to be honest, um, and kind of a bit different because I, I have I had to be honest, I haven't watched this episode since broadcast. I don't. Oh well, this is again. the first time. First time since broadcast. Holy crap! <laughs> well, yeah, I've watched it like seven, eight times. No, no. I, I mean, it's not like I haven't watched some series two episodes that many times. Like Army of Ghosts go um, and Doomsday. No, I didn't. I didn't actually have the DVD of this till fairly recently. Oh yeah, because you got the. Because I, no, I, I built up my um, David Tennant collection to get all of them recently, and I just had several gaps missing. So um, I actually had Age of Steel, Rise of the Cybermen, but I didn't have the um, that volume which included the Idiot's Lantern as well. I had the DVD files version for this while, so that's why. Um, but um, yeah, no, I remember this episode more like well, first off from the Wire, second off from the game which they had on the website, and thirdly. From um, the that not two battles and time cards, but I do not remember a lot of the episode's content itself. Yeah, from my initial watch of it, yeah. I remember parts of it, but not the entire episode itself. Yeah, I, I just I just always remember sitting kind of in the lounge because I always sat relatively close to the TV, which is kind of ironic mm. uh, for the story. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, well, okay, so yeah, when the, uh, I was just for it's like now, when the Doctor, I mean the skin effects on the face, that's really good. Mm. Creepy as hell. Yeah. But when the Doctor goes into the cage with them and they all start walking towards him, mm. like what were they going to do? Are they like violent tendencies? Uh, if, um... if they'd done something violent earlier, I would I kind of would have liked that, you know, that they, I know. I'm just kind yeah, of confused. It's a bit weird. Because it, they don't, they it, reminded don't do me, it reminded me a lot of, like, in rows with the Autons. They just like, you know, yeah. moving towards so, just like. Kind of, but all you see the faceless and, people do is slightly twitch. Yeah, and then suddenly they're all like, ah, we're, we're going we're gonna to get you, Doctor. They, 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 they don't really have. I don't think the writers had any idea what they're at. The well, faceless writer actually, might get us. Yeah. Well, actually, had any, necessarily any idea what the faceless people could actually do because, well, what could they do? They Mark, had, respond. What no, do they do? No. What can they do? What did they? What? What was? What's? What was it? And I'm, I'm just confused on why. Like, yeah. was it the electrical impulses of a brain so that it kind of shut down the brain so it went yeah. like? I just, I'm just yeah. confused on why the face disappears. We, we're very much here talking about like. More interesting parts of the episode when they're f- focusing on the wire and focusing on the um, faceless people. But so much of this episode is just spent with the Connollys. Yeah. Like, I don't care about their family squabbles as much as I care about <laughs> what's happening with the wire. I do like I do like the scene where the Doctor's like, and the Queen, what, no, what gender is the, the Queen? queen. <laughs> it's like, well, she's a woman. <laughs> do you think the Queen does the housework? Well... No. <laughs> well, <get> busy. <laughs> but then I think Rose doing it kind of pushed it too far. Yeah. By the end, the yeah. Uh, they're just like, what am I doing? So I, I did. I I quite like that scene. But it was like when it was like yeah. when they were later, like all the family was there. It's like I don't care. I don't okay. care. Okay. I don't. I don't need to see everybody. And uh, um, what the big and like? Why does why does a uh, like you know Eddie's sister? Not say anything when he doesn't come back, you know. Mm. They watch. Wait, where's Eddie? You know, where's my bro? Where, where's my brother? You know, <laughs> they just forget about him. Yeah, yeah. And like the weird thing is, like at the ending, because like he gets kicked. Mister Connolly gets kicked out of the house. Yeah. Uh, which yeah, you know, it's a positive thing. But then Rose suddenly encourages Tommy to go and. 
go yeah. to him and says it because he's a smart kid, but why should he go to him if he's just been a jerk this entire time? Like, I why? Guess, I guess it was because he only cared really deep down, Mr. Connolly. He just did it wrong. But he was still being kicked out after, you know, everything he'd done, like... Yeah. I don't know. It was it was odd. It was an odd moment. It was an odd moment. But that wasn't really. I don't know. I don't know. It just wasn't a that interesting a you know part of the episode. Like bits you remember about the episode is the wire and what's happening with the faceless people, not the Connollys. Yeah, you do. You know, you that, do forget it, those it, scenes. It, it really does drag on. Like that is a majority of the episode is focusing on the Connollys. I don't care about the Connollys that much. It was a bit like a classic episode, but then there weren't four episodes to, to for it to be all right to concert. If we had like you know four twenty five minutes, then a bit more like, but oh, only that they're, amount. They're, they're... That amount spread over like two parts would have been fine. But it was like it must have been at least like fifteen to twenty minutes. No, I, I'd, I'd say a classic episode would have more stuff to it because you have to build up something for the climax. The, True. Each, um, each cliffhanger, and this had no real moments of cliffhangers, like, other than the big finale, you know, nothing, nothing really went down. Happened. Doctor wanders around being confused, then he wanders into magpies, then he wanders out of magpies, and then he climbs a tower. Yeah, that's they go home. really all that happened, <laughs> so then they all go home. <laughs> And he gets a moped, Tommy does. Yeah. So, like, uh, Despite the fact that moped isn't actually seen again past the opening. Uh, no, the last time we see it is when the Doctor drives after the, the thing for the second, second time. time. Yeah. That's it, and then we, then we don't see it anymore. Yeah. But uh, I, um, uh, I, oh, I do like uh, the bit where um, the Doctor sees Rose, and he's just like so like horrified that Rose has lost her face yeah. it is like he just doesn't hear what they're saying in the background and the the, the uh, inspector actually mentions Torchwood it's like Torchwood are blacks and no mistake uh, is what he says mm-hmm. it, it's like you just hear like Torchwood just just yeah. to, just to the background yeah it's yeah. like they did what <laughs> went in, in like left it and like I do like that um, I do feel that they actually like in this story though that David Tennant's character is actually more quite solid within how he is later on in stories. Mm. It's kind of, I'd say this is probably, because I know that Series 2 is very much all over the place. Yeah. In this one, I think it's actually quite, he's getting to that point where it's like, yeah, mm. this is the type of Doctor, while in like other ones he was a bit kind of Yeah, well, no, he, uh, yeah, he acts a bit more like he does later on. Yeah. But I'll say that um, it doesn't make so much sense for this. Um, story at, at this point because I the reason why I always took it why he slowly changed to become a bit more a little bit angrier at points a little bit more it's because of know, the loss of Rose because of the loss of Rose because of what was happening with like the whole Master at the end of Series 3 and so on you know I think it all kind of built up to when he losing Donna at the end of Series 4 it kind of yeah yeah that that that, that makes him like that yeah um, yeah, he hasn't done enough here to really, like, you know... Yeah, this is one of his later film ones. It was in Block 4. I guess, yeah. I so, it, even after they filmed the finale, wow. The mm. Cybermen. Yeah, they already knew how it's all going to go down there. They filmed this after. Yeah, I find it weird how they filmed the goodbye scene before it was even goodbye. Mm, yeah. That's weird. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's mostly all, all the notes I've got down. Um... Actually, one thing I just briefly mentioned, because we kind of danced around it, but, like, The Wire herself was done very well. I really enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, no. I love the different nicely. type of villain as well. It's yeah. like, you know, no physical form. I quite... I, the only thing is, it's actually, Even in Classic, who I love the ones which don't have any physical form, they're a lot more mind yeah. control. You know, like, I, I don't know. It's kind of... It, uh, it, it kind of reminds me of a yeah. kind of Tom Baker villain. But I, I That's wish, where I'd place it in Classic yeah, it, era. It kind of. Though, I'd wish he'd done a bit more... Manipulating, because all she kind of does is kind of sit back and talk about uh, feed me and stuff. Yeah, she said. She, she doesn't. Much, she doesn't yeah. do anything clever. She just sort of sits in the TV, twitches on, and then eats people's we faces. We missed all that bit. Yeah, she, she, where she's, she, she's basically like him. a um, 
She's like a generic beast in, like, Doctor Who, other than the fact that it's now a woman in a TV. Like, yeah, she... It doesn't show really that much intelligence, really. Yeah. And, like, she gets scared by a sonic screwdriver. I mean, what was that? Oh, yeah, that. Like, yeah. The sonic screwdriver is not really... I mean, I like, guess for a TV, a electronic TV. Plug, do you... Yeah, so yeah, that's the end of the episode. Just try, pick up the plug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, nobody tried that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. They, they should have just should the... plug the TV. Oh. <laughs> God. 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 it, God. God. it. God. 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 Oh, I did like actually uh, that that he uh, records over. No, no. Yeah. He, well, he puts her onto a VHS, but he puts it on Betamax, which is a good, mm. good thing because there was always the VHS and Betamax uh, kind of a uh, one well, between the other and then VHS one. Though Betamax was the better quality and everything. Mm. Um, but yeah. <laughs>